My name is Dale Rexford Sears, and I am a contemporary artist living in northern New York. I was asked about the paint formulas I used, and I have made the following video about that process. I learned all the basics from the internet, so I am trying to pay it forward. Some extra information will be listed below this video as well. I use artist grade tube paint for my color choices. To begin, I create a three-part pouring medium mix that was recommended by Jessica Winterstrom. This includes an untinted deep base, high gloss varnish, and golden GAC 800 to stabilize drying. I mix up a large amount and store it in a quart size squeeze bottle. It dispenses easily and you have very good control over the amount. Drizzle point is when the paint flows off the stick in a steady, smooth stream, leaving a small mound. For this mix, I'm looking for a small mound for three to four seconds, then fade down into the mixture. To mix the paint, pour a small amount of the pouring medium in the bottom of a mixing cup. This will aid in mixing the paint thoroughly without sticking to the bottom of the cup. Tube paint is added about the size of a grape, maybe a little more. Then pouring medium is added to the pigment at twice the amount of the paint. This is done by volume, not weight, and is a very forgiving formula. These colors will constitute the second layer of paint and need to be mixed slightly thinner than that first pillow base poured on the canvas. Thoroughly mix. As you can see at this point, the paint is still quite thick and needs to be thinned. This is where either Josonia or Minwax Polycrylic is added in small amounts and stirred in. Keep adding until a drizzle point is reached that mounts for two to three seconds. Again, the second layer of paint needs to be slightly thinner than that pillow base. After stirring, bubbles will have risen to the top. Cap the paint tightly and let sit for 12 hours or more to let the bubbles dissipate. This cup of green paint was mixed up 24 hours previously and you can see the bubbles have disappeared. Some Josonia is being added to give it a good smooth consistency. The reason for this is that mixed paints will start to thicken after an hour and will need to be thinned. This one has reached a satisfactory drizzle point. Now I'll cap it and it's ready to go. Next, when mixing cell activator, I use a tab of painter's tape of one certain color only to avoid any mix-up with regular paints. There are two ingredients in creating a cell activator, tube paint and Australian Floetrol. Australian Floetrol has a different chemical composition than American Floetrol and is the type used to create cell activator. The Australian Floetrol must be shaken thoroughly before every use and it is best bought in the small containers and cap tightly. The best paint choice for creating cell activator is Amsterdam standard brand in either titanium white or black. Amsterdam titanium white produces the best cell composition, though it is not known what ingredient causes the higher quality results. The formula for mixing cell activator is one part Floetrol to one part paint. I highly recommend removing the cap and squeezing directly from the tube as this eliminates the possibility of dried paint falling into the mix. I will also cut a tube open to utilize the last amount of paint, especially titanium white. I was able to work the last amount out, but only after really working the contents to get it to come out of the tube. It was my last tube of titanium white and I really wanted to get some cell activator made. At this point, the Australian Floetrol is shaken very well and a one-to-one -one portion is added to the paint. That's right, one-to-one. -one. At this point, be prepared to settle in and stir steadily for a few minutes. Amsterdam Titanium White tends to blend slowly with the Australian Floetrol and requires more time than compared to other paints. You have to keep stirring the small bits and chunks until they break up and blend. 
I believe I was constantly mixing for at least four minutes. An indicator that your cell activator has reached a good consistency is observing the paint repelling from the side of the plastic cup. These craters are an indication that the mix is ready to be used. Also, the cell activator should flow off the stick in a thin, steady stream with little mounding. This is the top layer. It needs to be the thinnest in consistency. I was all ready to try out my paints and cell activators. I started with great confidence that I would see something wonderful right away. That only happens rarely, but I hope for it every time. Finally, on the third start over, I tried a braided line method I had seen in a video. When I added the cell activator, which I was running out of, I really thought, well, this is a total bust. And then I began to notice something happening. When it finished up, it was nowhere near anything I could have imagined or planned for. I hope you stay and watch and see how it can totally change in ways you might least expect. You may note that I spun the picture in both directions. The reversing of direction helps expand the cells. I'll put in some music and I hope you enjoy the session. Thanks for watching.